Hello everyone and welcome back to Let's Play Katamari Forever. I'm Dylan, I am your host, and it has been several weeks since I've recorded one of these, so please forgive my rust. One of the reasons that it's taken so long is that I fully expect this recording session to run a little bit longer than they usually do. The reason for that is that the next stage up on the roster is one of Brobdignagian proportions, a truly gargantuan stage on our hands here. Make a star 9 energy with count them 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 cousins and 1, 2, 3, 4 royal presents plus a shooting star for a total of uh, excuse me, for a total of 10 collectible objects on this stage. Uh, that's a number that is quite larger than what we're used to. You can see here on Make a Star 8 we had two cousins, two presents and a shooting star and I felt like I had a lot on my hands that time but wow this time. Alright well we better get started here. Let's get going to Make a Star 9 Energy which uh, not only is the largest stage we've seen before in terms of the number of objects on that stage that we're looking to collect, but also in, in terms of sheer size, this is the largest. The goal here, as we'll be seeing shortly, is 800 kilometers, which, to put that in a little bit of perspective, I think the largest Katamari I rolled in the entirety of Let's Play Katamari Damashi was 850 or so kilometers, meaning that the size we're going to be working with here in this stage is a size that in the original game was reserved for the final stage only, and in fact, I expect to be rolling a much larger than 850 kilometer, or excuse me, 850 meter uh, Katamari, uh, perhaps exceeding one kilometer in size. Even two kilometers is actually possible on this stage, but let's not get too far ahead of ourselves. In fact, I'm setting one simple goal for myself here. My intent for this roll around is to hopefully get the shooting star, and then I can go back and worry about the cousins and the royal presence individually later, but it would be nice on this first roll to be able to get that shooting star. I'm not sure exactly what time we have to complete the goal in to get that, but I know that in order to complete the stage period, we'll have to complete our goal within nine minutes, though I expect it to take less. We're gonna start out going between the legs of a couple of uh, large individuals here, picking up some bananas, which is reminiscent of one of the Make a Star stages in the original game, where the uh, first objects you rolled up were bananas all in a line. But here, just a few of them before we move on to other objects. Now, the shooting star on this stage is largely dependent on how well you're able to utilize the first of the two broken hearts on this stage. But in order to even like give yourself the possibility of getting the shooting star, you have to reach that first broken heart within a reasonable amount of time, regardless of whether you're able to utilize it properly. So I'm going to be trying to take this first part of the stage as quickly as I can. You'll find in a lot of Katamari stages, um, of the, the larger Katamari stages anyway, that being able to get through the early stage as fast as possible is going to be really important because time spent in the, the larger areas of the stage are much more valuable than time spent in the earlier parts of the stage just because uh, right now we have a very small window of objects that are actually available to us but once you get to a certain size every object on the stage is available to you. Right now I'm rolling up some merry gold bars which certainly feels good. One of the things this game lets you do is uh, sort of conquer your old foes once you're off the cows and bears level, you're free to roll up cows and bears to your heart's content, free of fear, and in this case we're doing something similar. On the shopping stage, we were terrified of those gold bars, but here they're merely one of the many objects in our repertoire available to join the Katamari, and we're happy to have them on the team. It's sort of like in, a, in an RPG when you reform your former opponents and a villain joins the party. It's always kind of a fun feeling. It's sort of what we're doing with the merry gold bars here. We've got to get up to three meters to go in that direction, and I ended up here a little bit sooner than I was supposed to, so we're going to turn around. We're actually going to go out here on the lake. Uh, I said I wasn't going to worry about getting collectibles quite yet, but there is a cousin right over here. That's Shikau, and that's just one fewer cousin I'll have to get next time I'm here. I'm going to skip through the King's dialogue fairly quickly there. Something I'd actually like to know is um, whether... The, uh, the king's dialogue counts against the timer. Like, obviously the timer doesn't start until he stops talking at the very beginning of the stage, but uh, when the king is talking to you about reaching a new area, like, the, the game sort of pauses during that time, and I wonder if the, the clock keeps counting down, or whether that's a, a safe time to take a break as it is. 
Anyway, we're now here on a racetrack, which is actually not the same racetrack as on the race stage. It shares some similar objects, but as you'll recall, that stage was sort of set on an island. It wasn't part of a larger city like this one. The city is a place where I, I tend to get lost. Like the, the first area of this stage is a pretty familiar one. It looks a lot like the Constellation stage, for example. And it's, uh, it's easy to find your way around, but this second area of this stage is so large that um, it's easy to get lost. But I was able to find the Broken Heart, and now that we're roughly car rolling size, what I'm going to do is grab the Broken Heart and then try to get all of those police cars lined up right there. And I'm going to use quick rolls exclusively because once I do that, I need to keep moving. Like this, oh, uh, okay, oh man, I, I didn't want to be in the air for that. Yeah, this is what I wanted to happen. I wanted to like chain together multiple size upgrades at the same time by just getting like full value out of that broken heart and skipping basically straight from the 3 meter mark up to the 12 meter mark and as you can see we're actually nearly at 24 meters which is twice what we needed to get through that barricade there <laughs> and now we've sized up once again once we reach 25 meters so we're in very good shape five minutes still in the clock though um, 25 meters is um, a very small portion of 800 meters. I feel that the hardest part of the stage is actually behind us, and we'll be able to reach that goal in no time at all. Will it be in Comet time? Maybe, maybe not. I hope it is, and I think we're on track right now, but gotta keep alert because uh, things can go totally wrong if I am not vigilant. So let's keep rolling up objects. Almost to 50 meters already as we reach this large city area followed by this uh, industrial oil field area here, and climbing back up into the airport we were at a minute ago, seeing lots of very diverse locations right now. And you may have seen off to the left a rainbow, a uh, precursor of things to come. The rainbow being the iconic object of the final stage of the original Katamari Damashii, and uh, obviously recurring image in the games in general, as you may have noticed. But uh, ju just like the act of rolling up a rainbow was sort of representative of domination over that game. It was like, that was, in a sense, the reward, but more so like the milestone for having completed that game and this stage, which sort of breaks all thresholds and manages to be larger than anything in that game was. Uh, also has some rainbows to roll up, but we're not quite to that point yet. I'm gonna go ahead and get these 60 cones here before we get too deep into the 60 area. Something you'll notice that I uh, have not mentioned once at all beyond saying the name of the stage is that this is the energy stage. In theory, we're supposed to be rolling up energy-related objects, um, objects related to the, the generation of energy, like these, uh, these windmills here, I guess. But um, you can just ignore that. It's not important. <laughs> um, you're going to be rolling up so many objects on this stage that like a good proportion of them are bound to be energy related. It's, it's really not something you have to go out of your way for, and I'm pretty vague on what's considered an energy object anyway. For the most part, the goal here is just to get up to the largest size category. Since we did start so small and get so big, there are a lot of different size categories in this stage. And the one with the most valuable objects in it is obviously the largest one, because uh, each object is going to count toward a larger percentage of your final size once you're at that point. That's kind of what I was getting at when I was saying earlier about how you want to get up to the largest size category as fast as possible. Getting the second broken heart there, which is um, of the instantaneous rather than continual variety, and that pushed us up to just short of 400 meters, but then that quick roll I followed it up with managed to get us up to 460 or so, already at 500 now, closing rapidly in on our goal of 800, um, unfortunately getting kicked around a little bit by the larger objects on this stage, hoping to find just a few more small ones that'll push us on our way up to 800 before the timer gets too deep. I'm hoping that shooting star time hasn't already passed us by. Um, Kind of, yeah, kind of having a dearth here of objects actually within the right size category for us to be rolling up. Um, and unfortunately, I've used my quick roll too much, so we're breathing ghosts right now. Um, can we get this rainbow? Yeah. Oh, uh, well, it looked like we picked up a rainbow, but we didn't. Um, there we go. 800 meters. All right, still two minutes on the clock. I think we may have done it with the shooting star. <laughs> the clock just ticked down to one minute remaining, though. Alright, and here we have this futuristic city. I guess when I was trying to get to 800, what I should have done 
just jump up to this floating futuristic city here and get some of these things, but I guess I'm kind of having a trouble getting th kind of having some trouble getting things up there now, so maybe that's not the way it should have gone. Oh well, no matter. We're now at one kilometer. Like I said, we are larger than we have ever been before, larger than I've been in any on-video Katamari roll before. Still not quite rolling up rainbows, but I see one right ahead of us that I'm going to try to snag. Come on. Come on, co cooperate with me here, Rainbow. I'm trying to prove a point, I guess. But, um, anyway, we still have those in our future. You better watch out for these whirlpools on this stage, by the way. They have some really weird physics, where if you're not large enough to roll up the whirlpool and you touch it, it'll, like, turn you around and you'll face unpredictable directions. So it can be a little bit difficult to get your bearings and get back on track. Like, knowing which direction you're going, um, as obvious as it is to say this, is incredibly important in this game. Like, seeing what's in front of you and knowing what what sort of things you're trying to roll up at the moment is really important. So having your view shuffled around on you and having every object that you can see replaced with another object is really disorienting because you have to go back into the mode of sizing things up. Like, you don't know wh what direction you need to be going in order to get the next size of things. It's being getting things. Let's try to grab this royal present on top of that volcano before time runs out. And that was easy enough. Still got 25 seconds remaining. Closing in on 1.5 kilometers. That's very nice. Probably not going to double up on the goal of 800 before time runs out, but we're going to get close anyway. Like I said, I have exceeded 2 kilometers on this stage, though uh, I don't expect it to be something that happens every time. I think this is already a fantastic score here. We might be looking at 90 plus points in terms of score. Um, and it, it's kind of ambitious to say that, but we did manage to break the 1.5 kilometers, so who knows. Anyway, time's off. <laughs> time's up. Off we go. Robo Rainbow! Let's see if I'm right about that 90 points. Sure would be nice if I was, but of course I'm not counting on it. Let's see what the Robo King has to say. First law of thermodynamics. Ah, uh, yes, this was the energy stage, at least in name, so we're getting a little bit of a, an explanation of energy here. All very elementary. It took us 6 minutes, 54 seconds to reach 1 kilometer in size. 1.5 kilometers, rather. And as you can see, we've got a ton of rainbows sticking out, but we mostly rolled up nature and also plants. Also something that started with a C, but I clicked through it too fast. Or rather, the Robo King scrolled it away too fast. These, uh, these pages do tend to advance on their own. Okay, my 90 point estimate may have been a little bit ambitious, merely 80 points. But as you can see, we actually did better in the category of energy than we did in the category of size. Which just goes to show what I was saying about how you can kind of disregard the whole energy gimmick. And uh, there's our royal present. It looks a little bit like a ghost, I guess. Um, Alright, well, we also managed to get a cousin on our way. That's Shikao. And another cousin, right here. That one is, who is that? Signolo. I don't even remember getting Signolo. I don't think I noticed when it happened. But anyway, nice to have him on board. And there's Nai Nai, who I think I grabbed off the back of a whale at one point. <laughs> also someone who I, I didn't mention getting as, uh, as I did so. Anyway, that's three cousins in one royal present down. Hopefully the comet as well meaning five out of the ten objects in this roll. That's not bad, 50%, given how many things there were to get there. Come on, show me a comment. Yeah, there it is. I knew it was coming. Yeah, it's not an easy one to get, but if you do use that second, or that first, rather, broken heart correctly, and uh, wait until you're at car size so you can get all of those police cars, then it's pretty much in the bag as long as you keep it up from there. Anyway, that Spectacle Sun is a pretty sweet one. You see, it looks like there's a, a solar storm going on on its surface. But, here we have a Jumbo Men cutscene, so uh, let's watch this. Okay. <laughs> 
And with that touching family moment behind us, we have now a uh, new loading icon there as a, a bunch of objects close in on that mushroom. Uh, it always bothers me that you don't actually see the new loading icon right away when it's loading after the cutscene. You have to wait until the next time something loads to see the new icon. But uh, in any case, with that behind us, let's go check out those remaining uh, cousins in Royal Presence on the energy stage. Okay, so first up is the school bag. You can find that on top of a building in the starting town, next to some Santas. Speaking of Santas, the second royal present, the trumpet, is flying around on top of a sleigh with a Santa Claus. You can track him down near the uh, first broken heart. The hat, which looks like a tiara for the princess, is uh, next to this elephant building. Here you can see all of those ridiculous presents in action. As for the cousins, you can theoretically find Peso at the airport, but the airplane he's on top of just kind of flies around the island, so you might have to look around for him a bit. Odeko, presumably no relation to Deco from Sin and Punishment, is one of the last things you'll find on the stage. He kind of has his own island you'll have to find. And that's all for the energy stage. I'll leave you with the comedy stylings of the Robo King. Thanks a lot for watching, and I will see you next time.